So the soul wants to transform, and we're supposed to be transforming throughout our lives. You can you could consider it the path of ongoing initiation. It never ends. So the final transformation, there is a final transformation, is called death. When we leave the form that we were in completely and we go, you know, if you're in the modern, um, what would you call that, diminished view, you would say, well, after that you died and that's the end. But in almost all cultures throughout time, the soul continues on. That's why we have an ancestor song or ancestor imaginations because uh, the soul continues on to the other world. It, it loses the body, but the essence of the soul continues, um, you could say. Um, and so, um, yeah, the, the, the first transformation is birth, leaving the, t- the timeless world, the imaginal world, the creative world, the other world, and entering the time-bound world. That's the first transformation. And then the next expected one would be leaving childhood and stepping not just into youth, but into the form of a more full person. Uh, not growing by uh, natural steps, but that's supposed to be a transformation. I should mention one reason so many people in the modern world are lost is because most people did not have a clear initiation or the experience that they had was not taken to be an initiation so that most people are not on the initiatory path. Many people are just trying to survive and not feel again the trauma of childhood and not feel again the loss uh, of vitality that they had as a child. Um, And what was supposed to happen is the rite of passage where those two things occur. The genius of a person is brought into consciousness, the eyes of the soul open, and then on the other hand, there's some healing of the wounds that were there. So transformation involves awakening to things that weren't conscious, but it also involves healing. And the easiest way to understand the word healing is it means to make whole again. And so we're supposed to have, we're not supposed to become whole and now we're great and we should be enshrined. What happens is we have moments of wholeness where we feel both the limits of our fate and the presence of a destiny, where we feel ourselves to be unique and in fragile human form, but connected to the things beyond ourselves and, and realizing that we have a seed of the divine in us as well. If you think about it in terms of imagination, how could people imagine the divine if they didn't already have the seed of it? And so all of that was supposed to happen in some kind of initiatory form so that when people left childhood and went through the in-between space uh, of uh, adolescence and youth, they would then step on a road that had meaning, that had intention, that had a sense of thread. So in ancient India, they had uh, what they called the upavita, the thread of life. And when a young person, before they would go out into the world or even go to marriage and what they call the householder, all young people would go to an ashram of some kind, would go on a spiritual road of spiritual practice. And the way that they would be Mm, inducted into that process, the ritual, was to get a red thread and it, and, and it would go over the left shoulder so that it would right across the heart and down to the hip. And this would be the upavita, uh, the thread of life. It was the indication of the initiate. But it was also, as many rituals used to do, taking the inner thread of genius, the thread uh, of the soul, the thread that goes from the mind to the heart and putting it on the outside of the body so that the person would become conscious of it and so that other people would see them as now on an initiatory path rather than, you know, just waiting for a driver's license so they could drive around the world. Um, So Upavita is another way of getting at the symbol of the thread. 